Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video, you're going to learn about environment variables in Ruby. So what is an environment variable and why is it useful? Well, I have an example right here. And this is the Ruby dash E command, which allows you to run some code and the code is right here. So if I run this, we get 62. So that's the number of environment variables we have right now. So EMV is like a hash kind of object that allows you to access these environment variables. But what are environment variables? Well, if I do this, what we get is my home folder. Okay. And if I do this, we get the folder where my gems are found. So what environment variables are, are global configuration options, global configuration options or settings. And when you use a program like Ruby, the Ruby interpreter, it has access to these environment variables. And if you open any other program like Atom or your browser or any other program, it also has access to these environment variables. So it's not something that's exclusive to Ruby. It's actually something that's available to every single program in your computer, in your operating system. And this works for Windows, for Linux, for MacOS, all of these operating systems have access to environment variables. So that's what they are. And to access them inside Ruby, you use this env hash like object. It's not exactly a hash, but it behaves like, like a hash. And that means that you can use as for this size, you can ask for the keys if you want with the keys method, right? And you can access individual values using their name, like the home, the gem home, or any other of the keys that you have. Okay, so now we have seen what environment variables are, but why are they useful? Why do we use them? Well, let's say that we have some kind of API key, right? Something like this, API key for whatever. But the thing is that you don't want to have this API key inside your source code. Why? Because when you share the source code with someone else, maybe you want to put make it public or you're writing a Ruby gem or something like that and your source code is going to be public. So everyone can look at it, right? And if you have your API key in there, then everyone can use your API key and you probably don't want that, right? Especially if this API key gives access to some account or some private information, or maybe it's a public API key, but it has rate limits. So to avoid having your API key in your source code, you can use an environment variable. And you can do it like this. For example, you can do API key equals one. And then the API key is set and it's passed into Ruby or any other programs. But when you do it like this, put it in, in the front, it only works for one call of the program, meaning it's not global. So it's like setting a local environment variable. If you want to make it global, you use export and then the name and the value like that, right? And now we can access it without having to prefix the, the actual value, right? So that's how you use environment variables to save some kind of 
a PI key or some other kind of setting. And when you do this, you are avoiding having your API key in the source code because it will only be in memory, it will only be on your computer, in your machine. And that avoids the problem. Now, what other things can you do with invariable variables? Well, if I go into a Rails project I have right here, you might be familiar with Rails environments. So in Rails, you have three environments by default. You have the development environment, dev, uh, then you have testing, and then you have production, right? And Rails behaves differently depending on which one of these environments you use. So one way you can change the environment is using environment variables. So let me show you an example. I can do Rails M like this. Then I say test. And then after this, I can, raise, I can launch a Rails console. And as you can see, it says loading test environment right there, right? And if I don't have this, by default, what you get is loading the development environment. So that's the difference, test development. And these two environments behave differently. And you can also test production environment if you want, just by changing this to production. And that will launch the Rails console in production mode, as you can see there. So that's how you use environment variables in Ruby and also in Rails. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like the video and so more people are able to find this video and benefit from this information. If you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos, subscribe to the channel now if you haven't yet, and visit my website rubyguides.com. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.